welcome back to Movie Review Mom. If you are a subscriber, thank you so much for returning. I really appreciate your support. And if you are brand new to my channel, yay, you found me. I'm so glad. My goal is to give you the heads up on filmmaking quality and content so that you can make the best decision for you and your family as to whether or not you want to watch a film and pay money and spend your time doing so. So today, the movie I'm reviewing is called The Mulligan, A Parable of Second Chances. This dramatic movie is now available to stream online. It's rated G. How often do we see that in the theaters or even online? And it's two hours and five minutes long. My movie review mom grade is... A B. So I'm going to give you an overview in a nutshell, and then I'll point out things I liked and things I didn't like about the movie, as well as offer tips for parents, themes worth talking about, interesting lines that are inspirational, and even a recommendation for well, a few movies that are sort of similar, at least they're about golf, that I think that you'll also like if you like this one. All right, let's dive in. In a nutshell, the story is about Paul McAllister, who seems to have it all, but his personal and his business life start to fall apart. Guided by the wisdom and advice of an old golf pro, Paul learns about playing a good game both on and off the golf course. The film was directed by Michael O. Sagebell, or Sabell, I don't know how he pronounces his name. Sorry, Michael and written by Rick Rowland and Randall Eldridge, as well as Jimmy Hager, based on the book by Ken Blanchard and Wally Armstrong. It's a Zondervan novel called The Mulligan, A Parable of Second Chances. And I really like that title, and I love the idea of a mulligan, both on the course and in life. All right, so the list of things that I liked about this movie is pretty long. First of all, it was great to see the wonderful legendary Pat Boone in something again. Good for him. He is 88 years old. We get to travel to beautiful Singapore in a few scenes of the movie. Christians will appreciate the traditional values that are taught and illustrated. And even if you don't play golf, you're definitely going to enjoy this. There's an old timey scene that shares the history of the mulligan and how it got its name, as well as another clip that shows some old golf footage of when the game first came to be. Several pro golfers play themselves in the film, such as Tom Lehman, Jenison Franklin, and Jim Nance. Now you can tell that I don't play golf because I struggled over those names. But I always love it when real people are in movies uh, just to kind of lend it a little extra credibility and endorse it. So I think that's great. There's a lovely soundtrack and we get to see some beautiful golf courses and landscapes. The movie is definitely targeted toward Christian audiences who will find the message of second chances and partnering with God in your life, particularly meaningful. However, anyone who might feel a little loss of focus Focus in their life might also find some inspiration. Golf fans will appreciate all of the golf lingo and references. There's some light humor and plenty of sweet charm. So there were a few things that I didn't like or just thought could have been done better. First of all, there are a lot of bad green screen moments. Uh, in other words, the tech isn't, it just doesn't look that slick. Some of the extras that play people in the background during many scenes are pretty bad where they're like, yay, <laughs> watching a golf tournament, yay. <laughs> the mom says to her son after something happens, I can't believe you won. And, you know, I, I've said things like that before too, but I just think as I listened to it, I thought, what a terrible thing to say to your son, like, I can't believe you won. Like, you're so terrible. How did that happen? <laughs> we see Titleist merchandising a bunch of times in this movie. And so I wonder how much they paid for those spots in the film. Just curious. And some people absolutely hate merchandising in movies. You know, I don't mind it unless it's super blatant. It is pretty blatant in this movie. But, you know, that's how they were able to fund the movie. I get it. So it doesn't bother me that much. 
the reason the mom gave for not being able to care for her son after something happened is also kind of lame. Now, I know that's super vague, but I don't want to give you any spoilers. Uh, but anyway, the writing, in other words, was a little weak, and there were some plot points that I thought were also a little weak. Another example of poor writing is when it shows people who are um, talking to somebody and the phone rings. This is like my old fashioned phone. I guess I should say phone. That's a cell phone. The cell phone rings and they instantly ignore the person that they're talking with in order to see if there's somebody better on the phone. Now, of course, if it's an emergency, I get it. But if I'm with someone, they get my full attention. If someone calls me and I'm focused on that person or people, you know, depending on the situation, I just let the other person who's calling me leave a message. I, I, I personally... I don't like it when I'm with someone, their cell phone rings and they're, excuse me. And then they just pick up the phone and start chatting with someone. I'm like, okay, message received. I'm not as important as that person. You know what I mean? Okay, you can tell it's kind of a pet peeve. I'm just wondering, am I the only one that does that? The movie itself is very predictable. Non-Christians might be annoyed by all of the talk of God and prayer and scriptures and faith. And honestly, I didn't even know that this was a Christian movie. Oftentimes, I don't watch the trailers. I don't read the reviews. I get the, uh, the studio might send me a, a press screener and I just dive right in and start watching it. And so for the first part of the movie, you don't know that it's going to be a Christian movie. And I am Christian, so I was, of course, totally fine with it. Uh, but someone who doesn't know that might be caught off guard, especially if they don't like Christian movies, which tend to be cheesy and uh, a little laced with saccharin, you know, like just too sugary sweet. And, and I get that for sure. But I think Christian movies have come uh, a long way in terms of quality that, you know, they, what they need is a strong audience who will support them so that Hollywood sees that it's in demand and then they'll make more good Christian movies. All right, let me give you some tips for parents. There's no profanity. Yay. Very family friendly movie. In other words, talk to your kids about what it means to be separated versus divorced from a spouse, because there's some conversation and situations definitely about that. Some Chinese is spoken with subtitles, so you've got to read. Uh, there's talk of death, and we even see people at a funeral. And we see a grown man throw a temper tantrum where he violently throws a golf club and, you know, causes some damage. And anyway, talk about temper tantrums with your kids. Some of the themes that are illustrated while in the movie are second chances, performance, perfection, and profits, which is what a company speaker says at an event. Uh, talk to your family about those values. Do you believe them in that order or what would you substitute instead? Forgiveness, your values in life. And I like the idea that every stroke counts when they're playing golf, but also in life, you know, be mindful and set your priorities so that every stroke, every choice counts. However, the theme of second chances is absolutely the strongest theme of the movie. All right, so I always write down interesting lines so that you can kind of get a feel for the movie. And I have them all on my written review at moviereviewmom.com. I'll share just a couple of them with you right now. So Ted Styron, who um, is played by Chip Lane, says, it's only worth it if you earned it. And that's uh, how he feels about business and golf and everything. And I, I think that that's a really interesting line and certainly one that older generations believe. Younger kids are always asking for free stuff or whining and complaining that it's not fair. And that's a very different mindset. So that might be an interesting conversation to have with your family or with whomever you watch the movie. And uh, the old pro, Will Dunn, is played by Pat Boone. And he says, make an assessment of your life every day. And I absolutely agree with that mindset. I'm actually a, an author coach and I talk to my clients about their author goals, but it also blends very much into their life goals and setting priorities. And so at the end of each day, I do that personally. I'll evaluate what my goals were, what my tasks were, and was I the person that I wanted to be? And if not, 
How could I improve my behavior or my attitude the next day? Anyway, I think it's great advice. And then another line I'll share with you is spoken by a character named Chow Wong. He's played by Derek Wong. And he says, not all money is good money. And there are some really interesting lessons about business, how to run a business and your business dealings with integrity. And I actually really appreciated that element of the movie. All right. So before we go, let me give you a recommendation for three golf movies that I think that you'll really enjoy. Uh, one, the very first one is called The Greatest Game Ever Played, a movie filmed back in 2005, all about golf and the love of golf. And I don't want to give you spoilers for any of these movies, but I do recommend that one. And then another older one, even older, back from 2000, uh, is called The Legend of Bagger Vance. Now it's a little hokey, but there are some good life lessons of, and golf lessons in that movie. And then another one is called Bobby Jones, Stroke of Genius, back uh, filmed in 2004. So those are all a little bit older, uh, but still good ones, especially if you are a golf fan. All right. Thank you for spending a few minutes with me. I hope that if you watch this movie, you do enjoy it. Thank you so much for all of your support. I so am grateful for every time you subscribe, you like my video, you comment below. All of that spreads magical fairy YouTube dust all over my channel. So thanks so much. Have a great day and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.